Maybe he can.
packed house, and we will continue to worship um, as we do. If you haven't had a chance to be in here, uh, this was Mama Bits, um first church and has gone through many uh, renovations and just recently um, a touching up of the beautiful painting um, as uh, things had cracked a little bit. And so we continue to invest in our past uh, to lead us into the future. And uh, here we are worshiping today. So connect and be known is our focus. And the question that we're moving to for the next couple of weeks is how do we give? What is it within ourselves that we are called to share abundantly? And Pastor Kristen is uh, going to dwell there uh, today in our text. And we trust that the Spirit comes and finds us and speaks not only to us individually, but also as a community. So I invite you, um, if you would like, to stand as you are able and begin with our call to worship. Gather in person here in the chapel. Not online today, yes, we are. Oh, we are? Yes, sure are. Right Smile. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> I stand corrected. <laughs> gathered in person, gathered online, gathered in community by love. We open our hearts, our minds, and our spirits to God's presence. As we sing and listen and pray, as we break bread together, we receive the gifts of life, seen and unseen. May our, may our lives and giving reflect this abundance. Spirit of life, gather us together as the body of Christ. Amen. If we were to call confession by another name, we would call it a moment to pause, to reflect and to be honest about the places we want to grow and the way we need God's help. Dear community, together let us acknowledge our failure to love as this, wor this world as Jesus does. We'll take a moment now in silence for our own confession. God of mercy and forgiveness. We confess that sin still has a hold on us. We have harmed your good creation. We have failed to do justice, love kindness, and walk humbly with you. Turn us in a new direction. Show us the path that leads to life. Be our refuge and strength on the journey. Through Jesus Christ, whose saving grace shows us how to love one another and extends grace to us when we fail to do so. So hear and believe the good news of the gospel. We are seen and heard. We are loved and forgiven. Thanks be to God. For love like that. Amen. Please open your green LBW candles to number, or page, no, number 409. The, the big number is uh, 409. And we'll join together in our opening hymn, Praise and Thanksgiving. If you don't have one, go ahead and raise a hand, and I've got someone in the pew next to you. We'll catch you.
setting of your hymnal, page 57. And that is the setting we'll be using for our liturgy this morning. In peace, let us pray to the Lord.
because the harvest has come. He also said, with what can we compare the kingdom of God? Or what parable will we use for it? It is like a mustard seed, which when sown upon the ground is the smallest of all the seeds on earth. Yet, when it is sown, it grows up and becomes the greatest of all shrubs and puts forth large branches so that the birds of the air can make nests in its shade. With many such parables, he spoke the word to them as they were able to hear it. He did not speak to them except in parables, but he explained everything in private to his disciples. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God.
but perhaps acknowledging our unease and not always knowing the big picture leads us somewhere important when it comes to our giving. And that is that we have to trust in God and the work of the Holy Spirit to make sense of it all. When we scatter our seeds of time and talent and money on the ground, we simply have to trust that God is always providing a way to grow our seeds into good grain. We can sleep and rise night and day, going about our business, and while no one is looking, the Holy Spirit finds a way to make our seeds sprout and grow. First the stem, then the bud, and the ripened grain to be harvested all in good time. We can neither hasten or delay the work of the Spirit. This, it turns out, is an important stewardship lesson for me. See, I'm a planner and I'm a saver, and I'm the one in charge of the finances in our household. And I take great pride in re researching our purchases and our giving so carefully. And I like to understand exactly how each pit piece fits into my family's financial plan. When we pledge to church, I want to understand exactly how our gift of money will be used. How will it impact the big picture? Giving for me, at least, and maybe some of you can relate, requires a little more faith that God is indeed in charge. A beautiful illustration of this kind of trust comes in the story of an organization that we have just begun to partner with uh, to send weekend meals home to kids and families from Northport Elementary, and that organization name is Every Meal. Every Meal has become a large organization focusing on filling the food gaps for children uh, and families. And they have this website now full of information about how they source their food, how communities can get involved, how to contribute, how much of one's donation translates into real food for families in need. They make it so easy to see just how the dollars that Mount Olivet now invests in their mission through our partnership to make a difference. But did you know that every meal came about when a small group of people from Mill City Church simply asked the principal of Sheridan School in Northeast Minneapolis, how can we help? And the answer was provided to them. Will you help the hungry kids in our school? And so Mill City and other partners began in 2010 by providing one bag of food to 27 kindergartners every weekend. I wonder what those original volunteers and funders thought at the time. Could they, in their wildest of dreams, have anticipated how the Spirit would be working in and through their small-scale gifts of time and money to create what is today a nonprofit that has provided six million meals, serving over 10,000 children across 400 locations in Minnesota. Seemingly small gifts grow into amazing and significant missions with God's help. And Mount Olivet's work with Kid Pack over so many years has now paved the way for us to help leverage what every meal has to offer hungry children and families at Northport Elementary. But sometimes trusting that our contributions of time, talent, and money are making a real difference is hard. We can see our individual contributions in the moment but it's harder to see the big picture because the big picture is continually being revealed in God's time and on God's terms. How many of you have put together more than your fair share of puzzles during the pandemic? 
Have you ever tried to put together a puzzle without looking at the picture on the box? <laughs> it's hard and frustrating. You might start by turning over the individual pieces, getting all the edges together. That's my favorite strategy. Grouping pieces by color or shades or texture, looking for clues, picking up subtle patterns, taking lots of breaks, and coming back at it with a fresh mind and a fresh heart. And maybe this is what giving in God's kingdom is like. We all have our puzzle pieces to lay down on the table. They're different sizes, shapes, colors, and textures, but they're all absolutely necessary to the big picture. As we are giving our individual pieces, laying them down, fitting them together, our faith is engaged, our hearts are changed, but we can't always see exactly what God is doing in our midst. But the good news is this. God puts our pieces together. God uses each and every gift we offer to the church and to the world and puts them together with a power beyond our understanding. And when we trust that the Holy Spirit is so very active in it all, it frees us to give joyfully and to say yes and to co-create with God and to be held a bit in suspense as the Spirit works with us to revitalize our mission and our ministry. You will notice that the big question for today is not do you give, but how. How do you give? We are all giving. And as we take time over the coming weeks to reflect on how we individually and collectively give, we offer thanks to each and every one of you for the beautiful ways you give to the mission and vision of Mount Olivet. And we give thanks to God who puts our pieces together. Amen. <laughs> And instead of God of the Fertile Fields, we'll sing hymn number four, five, three. If you would trust in God, say God.
conversation with each other. It's a little bit harder to move in the chapel because there's not so much room. So we're going to use our hips a little bit and just turn um, to those around you. Two questions for today. What is your first example of generosity? And the second is, what's hard for you about being generous? So we're going to just take some time. You're welcome to be seated. If you want to get up and move around, if you want to stand up or sit down, whatever works for you. Um, and we'll take time in conversation. And then friends online, so glad you're with us. Ian is going to help us interact online as well with you with these questions as well. So let's connect together.
really great room to sing in.
shepherd of your flock, Christ our Lord, who after his resurrection has sent forth the apostles to preach the gospel and to teach all nations, and promised to be with them always, even until the end of the age. And so with all the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and joy in their unending.
faith uh, that we hear their names, we, we read their names on the headstones of their, um, but have the faith in that time to begin and step out in faith. And because of that, we are here today worshiping in this chapel. And uh, for this legacy of love that goes um, beyond um, what we can know and understand, but our call to continue to be a part of it. Um, for all that is wrapped around us today in the past, but also the future, we pray, God, in your mercy. Amen. Uh, a prayer for world peace and a prayer for world leaders to pursue peace and stability. Um, a prayer uh, for peace um, and for world leaders um, in just all the areas of turmoil. Um, for solidarity with humankind, uh, for us to be able to act in the ways that we can, um, how important um, it is for wisdom and compassionate servant leadership in this world, which oftentimes we don't see. And so God, we speak this prayer into this world, that your promise that when your word is spoken, um, that it will fulfill its purpose, and we pray for that, God, in your mercy. Yeah, yeah Roy. I guess I have to share my memories of this building. We've been <coughs> members a very long time. Many, many years ago, this building was in such disrepair that they were going to burn it down. And my retirement project was to coordinate its salvage. My father's nephew, the artwork in all this building. And I cheated and did the plowing and pulled the permits and did it myself. <laughs> <laughs> so for all these stories, these, these kind of quiet stories, Roy, not quiet anymore. <laughs> um, of how this place came to be and, and what a powerful message and how we give, right? We each contribute what we have, the knowledge and the expertise financial resources so the story continues and for all these stories that are held within these walls and beyond we give thanks god in your mercy <laughs> christy christy gives thanks choir you just show up um, blake who moves from the organ to the piano angela who translates hymns um, all the things that have to come to be that we simply receive the power of the gospel uh, made known and prayer is on as well. God in your mercy. John. Prayer of blessing and strength for him and for Ben and Ruth Bowman. He spoke to him yesterday and uh, Ruth recently was in the hospital with a temperature of 103 and left a very distressed. And uh, they've got her now under antibiotics and has a yes issue and has a fever. So we pray for Ruth Berman's healing um, in the hospital again. God, um, just tender care for her each and every day, and for her husband then as well. We pray, God, in your mercy. Yeah, we have a prayer to bless the marriage of my daughter Jenna to Ryan Solomon yesterday. Um, just to continue to bring joy to their union, and um, just a blessing on our family for calling in. So congratulations um, for Jenna and Ryan on their wedding, um, for your family tree that continues to grow, um, that God may bless their love. We pray God in mercy. <laughs> Tomorrow is Indigenous Peoples Day um, and the deep history here at Mount Olivet, but also to um, this land that was the Tokota peoples um, a long time ago. And for us to continue to become aware, um, compassionate about our deep sense of history, and um, it's not a day, it is uh, the way that we love in the world, and so especially for indigenous people uh, to be able to speak their story, and uh, for their justice as well, we pray, God, in your mercy. Yeah. And to all these things we pray today, God, um, trusting that you have heard us, that you will hear us in the days to come. Thank you, friends online. Any prayers? Um, for Jeannie uh, Renberg's Uncle Floyd, who is in the hospital again.
Thank you for being so flexible. Um, and uh, the word is across the street that we're in the clear, so we should have um, service at 10.45. We were due to have a new member brunch at 10 o'clock, um, which is hard to do. So if you are newer to Mona a bit, will you just raise your hand because I know some of you are here. Hello. Can we say welcome? <laughs> Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Yes, so we're going to use the words on him 563. The tune is wrong, but you'll know the tune. So just sing these words. Thanks be to God.